Welcome back to here to Goldberg. Today we're going to be talking about diversity and ethnicity amongst the Jewish people and, of course, the state of Israel. This is a subject that does not get enough consideration because in the Western world we're very content with these monoliths. So if you're cream cheese, you're evil. If you're Hispanic, you're an illegal immigrant. If you are black, you're historically butthurt and oppressed. And if you're Jewish, you know, you'll have to act and think the same way and just be miserable. Uh, that's profoundly insulting, but it helps, especially our progressive leftist friends who don't like researching or investigating anything outside of their own worldview, uh, whatever talking points the DNC provides to them. And that's why in this video we're going to do something different and give everyone a sense of who and what we're discussing uh, when it comes to these very important subjects. So let's just start out over here. This is an excellent book I read last year, The 13th Tribe. He theorizes that modern, especially Ashkenazi Jews, are descended from the Khazar Empire. Now, if you talk to people who know about history, many of them don't even have any knowledge of the Khazar Empire. It was this buffer state between uh, certain Muslim and Christian territories, and rather than them being, you know, converted, they actually just took it on board. They went and researched different religions and said, hey, we're going to be Jewish which is very odd because, of course, the Jews aren't evangelical typically. Well, his belief is that a lot of those Jews actually came from there rather than Israel itself. It's a controversial idea, but it's really just, you know, fascinating. There's another book I have not read, and that suggests that Jews may in fact have come from uh, Africa. Uh, that is one. I don't know if it's a really serious scholarly work or it's a little bit on the older side, but of course we do have, we're going to talk about later on, the Jews from Ethiopia and that whole subject. But definitely check this one out because it's got great information. So to begin with Ashkenazis, generally this is a category including people uh, from around the area of Germany and then Eastern Europe, Poland, Lithuania, Estonia, other spots. Uh, you have to realize if you take the diaspora to be a real thing, they went pretty much everywhere. And that's why you find Jews in very, you know, odd, remote corners of the earth. But Ashkenazis, these are the ones you're most likely to come across, let's say in the United States, in our political system. And because for the longest time they were intermixing with Europeans, they don't look that much different. Now, you will see some features occasionally, or you'll see the name, but... Uh, in certain instances, really, you know, if there's been enough of mix, mixing, sorry, you're not going to know. This is actually one of the reasons why this guy, uh, Werner Goldberg, he was used as a promotional picture for an ideal Aryan by the Germans. It turned out he was part Jewish, and he, after he served in the military, he got kicked out, I think in 1940, when they realized, oh shoot, you know, he doesn't quite fit the ideal in, in that sense. Uh, this one, Z.P. Levni, I'm probably mispronouncing that. She was active in Israeli politics, is of Polish descent. So you can kind of see more of the Slavic features, blue eyes. That's not very common in the Middle East unless it's been brought in by Europeans or maybe some other group, maybe Northern Indian, if there are any uh, from that portion. This is Avigdor Lieberman. He was for Minister of Foreign Affairs, Russian Jew. So again, that gives you another idea of the variety. Golda Meir, also a Russian Jew, and she would come under fire when she was prime minister because there was a perception she was favoring Russian immigrants as opposed to those from the Middle East and Africa. So it just gives you a sense because people assume, oh yeah, you know, they're all one. No, they even have these inter-ethnic conflicts just because they have maybe a similar religion does not necessarily mean they're getting along or they don't see one another as inferior. I could not find a more modern picture, but Sephardi, Sephardim, uh, this is a group from the Iberian Peninsula, and due to varying reasons, uh, the established governments there, uh, many would flee and join the diaspora. Some went to South America, others went to Turkey. Uh, what's interesting about them, so at least this is what I mentioned in the book I wrote about Mussolini, there was a perception in Italy that they didn't really care as much about Jews as far as, you know, 
uh, versus Hitler because they said that Sephardi Jews, and whether this is accurate or just an opinion, were less proletarian and leftist than the Ashkenazis. So that's something to consider. And this is Ayelet Shaked. She was a minister of justice. Now, initially looking at her, I thought she's Ashkenazi, but she's actually half Iraqi and half, I believe, some kind of European, probably Ashkenazi. Most people looking at that, you probably think maybe Mediterranean, maybe Italian, possibly French. So it just goes to show. Uh, this is Orly Levy, another politician. She is of Moroccan Jewish descent, which is what they have a broader category called Mizrahi or Mizrahim. And for one part of Northern Africa in particular, Maghrebi Jews. So uh, her father was also a pretty prominent politician, just for informational purposes. This is another Mizrahi Jew, Moshe Katsav. He was the president of Israel for a while, and then he had a rape scandal, so he's no longer president. Huh, imagine that. He is uh, of Iranian Jewish descent. Yes, there are some Jews in Iran. And I heard a story about that where the Iran-Iraq war, Iranians were actually buying weapons from the Jews or from Israel. So, you know, yes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But uh, that just give you, gives you a sense of things. And this is Beta Israel. So this is the Ethiopian Jewish community. Now, some people believe in this. Others think it's hogwash that King Solomon had a relationship got it on with the Queen of Sheba. They started a new line. That's why many Ethiopians consider themselves to be descended from the Kingdom of Israel. And there are certain artifacts which are believed to be from that period stored in Ethiopia uh, in some holy places. This is one of the contributing factors along with the Mizrahi Jews where the perception under Golda Meir and her premiership was that uh, they were not being treated and giving the same rights, access to housing, whatnot. So you had these Israeli Black Panthers that were basically launching Black Lives Matter rallies and similar things to put pressure on the government. Which was funny because Golda Meir was a socialist, and then she had to contend with these radical leftists, you know, trying to get her to be kicked out of office. So uh, that's just kind of an overview, gives you a sense of, in Israel, what's going on. Uh, these inter-ethnic rivalries are going to continue being a question, especially as the Arab population increases because it has generally a elevated birth rate versus the more secular Israelis. Now, of course, the uh, Hasidic Orthodox Jews, they're still pumping out kids, but that's going to be a real question in the future. Can Israel continue on this kind of hawkish foreign policy? Because a lot of their governments really are built with like relatively thin majorities. And what's going to happen as more Arabs start voting in polit uh, politicians and their own parties in the future. So just thought it would be a kind of uh, uh, curious topic to examine.